In this video, we're going to be learning Yeoman, which I believe is one of the best and most awesome tools that's come to front-end development in a long time. Uh, if you are learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or if you're using those languages day in, day out for your job, you got to know what Yeoman is, uh, and you need to know these tools. You're going to be really happy uh, to know how this all works. So let's just get into it. First thing you'll need is you'll need Node.js installed on your system. If you don't have that installed, go to nodejs.org and click the green button. I'll leave it at that. It installs on Mac, Windows, Linux just fine. And then you're going to need to open up the dreaded terminal that a lot of people avoid because they think it's terrifying, but I promise it's not. So on Apple, that's uh, Utilities Terminal. And on PC, you just hit Apple or Windows run and then type CMD. Here's how you know if Node is installed. You go Node-V and that'll give you your version, 0.10.22. If that says Node command not found or something like that, Node is not installed on your computer. Or if you're on Windows, you might have to reboot after installing it. So that's it, Node's installed. So now you have access to the NPM command, which is Node Package Manager. You're gonna go NPM install-G, yo which will globally install, that's what the dash G is for, globally install Yeoman. Uh, and it's very important to put that dash G in there, or it's going to put it in the folder you're in, and you won't be able to run it as a command. So we did that, and let's also install npm dash G generator web app. This is kind of like their default, whoop, did I not? npm install, oh, I didn't do install. There we go. So web app is kind of like their basic, hey, you're building a website. This is kind of a one size fits all website generator. What Yeoman does is they give you a set of generators and anyone can actually add their own generator uh, to Yeoman and you can automatically generate things. So now wherever I go, I can create a folder and I can have Yeoman build me a whole web app. So let's go CD space code. That's where I keep all my code. Make directory test app. There we go. So now I'm in the code test app directory and I'm just gonna hit yo. Yo, okay. So then it gives me a list of all the installed generators. As you can see, I have quite a few installed because I've messed around with a lot of them. I'm just gonna arrow key down to web app and hit enter. And then what would you like to keep it easy? I'm gonna drop SAS off. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop all these off. But if you if you know how to use SAS, definitely keep SAS. Check Bootstrap. It'll put it all in there for you. Um, but I'll just check them all off with a space bar for now and hit enter. And there you go. It's building me a web app. Do, 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 do. And it's grabbing everything I need to build that web app. Um, it's going to give you a lot of cool stuff. There you go. It's done. Gives a little shout out to everyone who made it. Adi Osmani especially. Killer guy. Awesome guy. I don't know him personally, but I'll pretend I do because he's amazing. And now all you need to do is type grunt server. And what that's going to do is it's going to start up a web server on your own computer using Node.js. And it's going to open your application, which it did on my other window here. So I'll pull it up here. Now we have test app. And we are, lo we are looking at our computer, which is this address right here is the web address for our machine. Um, and there you go. That's a website that it made for us. So I'm going to go ahead now and pull that over here. Let me go ahead and add a folder so we can see what I just made. Code test app. There you go. My test is something I was doing earlier. Let me get rid of that guy. Okay. Test app right here. This is all the files it just made for us in the test app directory. Um, and let's look at the app folder and go to index.html. It already made us a website and included a lot of stuff. If you've used HTML5 boilerplate, then a lot of this stuff looks really familiar to you. Uh, and it basically included HTML5 boilerplate. Um, and here's our web page. And it did some cooler things than that. It included live reload. So if you have the live reload extension on Chrome, you'll see this guy right here. And now, any changes I make to the web page, it'll refresh automatically. I hit save, and there we go. It refreshed. Uh, to get the live reload extension, you just go to settings, extensions, and then get more extensions. And you can see I got live reload here now. And you just want to make sure that that is checked. If it's, if it's open in the middle, then it will not be live reloading. 
So now any changes I make on my web page or on my CSS or on my JavaScript, it will be listening and automatically refresh my page. So instead of allo allo, I can go hello, hello. Actually speak English there, Mr. Addy. Um, and then let's go to styles. It also included some main CSS for us already. Let's see what this is. This is the hero unit. Well, every hero unit needs to be red, of course. And then, oh, color. There you go, color red. You notice CSS just takes a little bit, and there you go. Now everything's red. Any new rules I add here real time are just automatically going to update. It is awesome for web development. Now let me show you. Let's go into a little bit more detail. Kind of what Yeoman does is it gives you an easy way to just jump in and have your development workflow be faster. And then as you work with Yeoman, you can actually learn some top-notch top ideas and ways of doing things. But you don't have to know them to start using Yeoman. You don't have to know what all's going on right now. You just have to know, it gave me this great website and it real time is going to refresh for me. So let's go into a little bit more of what it's doing for you. Let's look at gruntfile.js. You notice I did grunt server. Oh, and by the way, when you're on here, just hit uh, control C to cancel that at any point in time. Once again, grunt server. It's going to run your whole server. It's going to open up your window. See, opens it for me. Nice. Um, and then you cancel it any time. What that's doing is it's booting up your web server. And then it is waiting and it's listening. It's running what's called grunt watch. And it's going to be listening for any saves on any of your files. And it's going to reload your web page as that's going on. So here's kind of what's going on in grunt. This will totally freak you out. If you're not used to JavaScript, it'll totally freak you out. So just kind of sit in it for a little while so you can understand a couple lines. It's not, it's not that bad, but it's also not incredibly easy either if you don't know JavaScript. Uh, it's running watch, which watch just, it watches some JS, and it's listening to all these files. Basically anything in my Yeoman app scripts folder that ends with JS, it's listening to that. And when it listens to that, it's going to live reload. Um, it's also going to listen to styles. So if I make any changes to my styles file, styles folders, CSS files, it's going to automatically reload. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is the connect thing. This is what tells it to open up a server on port 9000. Um, it's also going to do some unit testing for you. If you guys are into unit testing, which I hope you are, then it created all that for you here. If you're not into unit testing, I'll leave it out of this tutorial. But it built your whole unit test file for you there, which is super nice. Um, it's going to JS hint all your JavaScript. And Mocha is what it's going to be using for your actual, some of your unit tests. And let's look at another thing it did. It gave you a Bower JSON. So it automatically put jQuery on your page. Um, here's kind of what Bower is. Do I want to get into Bower yet? I'll get into Bower a little bit later. So uh, let's look all the way down at the end of our grunt file. And okay, here we go. Register tasks. So we've got a few grunt tasks here. These are the things that you can actually do. Grunt server. Um, oh, and look, it's been deprecated. So now it tells you to use grunt serve. Okay, grunt serve is the one we should be using now. That's that's a new addition. Grunt serve, what that that boots up the server and it watches. And then grunt test, this is if you want to write unit tests and run those. Then you run grunt test. And then grunt build is what you do when you're ready to put your website onto the interwebs for the whole world to see. Uh, and what that's going to do is that's going to actually build everything out. Uh, it's going to compress all your CSS style sheets. Let's actually run that real quick. What you can do is you can put all these files with FTP or whatever you're using straight up onto your website and call it a day. Uh, but what you can also do is if you want to make use of a lot of great things going on, you can just run grunt build. And now it's going to start minifying your JavaScript. It's going to minify all your CSS. And it's going to, uh, there we go. And it's going to dump it all into the dist folder, which stands for distribution. And this is your actual website right here. Let's take a look at the difference. Look at this. It's minified. So there's way less code going on here. It's going to load a lot faster. Another thing you'll notice, your styles are minified. It also 
minified everything down all the way. Those are a lot smaller. And your JavaScript got minified, and all the vendor, all the jQuery and everything else you're using got minified as well. So this is actually what you're going to put up on the internet. Uh, there's a lot of best practices that went into this that is really going to make your website a lot more performant. Uh, so that's kind of a lot of the built-in things it gives you. Let's look into this index.html and find out what's going on with that. Let's say you want to add some more CSS files to your web page. You don't just want to do main.css. Say you want to add, you know, something for the rest of your site. Let me say this as, I don't know, blog.css. So then all you do is copy and paste this link, and now we add blog.css. And so now it's going to load both of these files into our web page. And when we run grunt build, it's going to concatenate both of those into one file and minify them together. We're still only going to see this one file. That's really cool. If you scroll down to the bottom of your page, exact same thing happens with your JavaScript. It puts all your JavaScripts in here. Um, and it's basically pulling a Bower file for you. Here's our scripts main JS. So let's see our scripts main JS. It's logging allo allo right now. Let's say we want to save this to blog.js. Now it's going to console log blog blog. Um, we want to get that on our page. It works the exact same way. Scripts blog. So now when we're in development mode, it's going to load in all the files individually, so we're going to see console errors. Uh, but when it goes time to run the grunt build, it's going to build out one minified scripts file, and it's going to take care of that. Let me look. Let me show you real quick what's what this whole Bower thing is all about. One of the the things that front end is finally caught up to is the concept of package management. Of if it's the exact same file that can be downloaded for all the computers, all the people working on your project you should not have to put that file in your project. You should be able to create a package file, which is this bower.json, and say it has a dependency of jQuery. And then what? Then all you have to do is the person downloads your project from GitHub, and they do bower install, which I'll do here. And when you do bower install, it's going to go ahead and grab all your dependencies. So here's kind of, let's say we also wanted to add backbone.js to our file. So we go Bower install backbone. I think it's called backbone. It might be called backbone.js. Yep, there we go. It's downloading backbone. And you'll notice it's going to change this file here in a couple seconds. In just a couple seconds. Oh, I didn't hit save. Bower install backbone dash s, and it will actually save it to your Bower JSON file. Capital S. Come on, get it together, Will. Okay, so uh, Bower install backbone. What that command did is you'll notice up here I have my Bower components folder, and now I have jQuery and I have backbone, and backbone requires underscore, so it automatically grabbed that for me as well. So those are now in here, and when I hit dash s, it saved it to my bower.json file. So I'll include this in my GitHub repository, and now when anybody downloads it from GitHub, they just go bower install, and it's going to grab everything that I need. It knows I have everything, so let me actually go ahead and delete some stuff. So when I, I'm not going to include this bower components in my GitHub repository. That's a whole lot of files that don't actually have to do with the code I'm writing. I'm just using them for my web app. So all I do is I include this in my file that says, hey, I need jQuery and Backbone. You get it, you run Bower install. And it's now going to grab jQuery, it's going to grab Backbone, and it, Backbone is going to grab underscore. There you go. See, all three are in there. And then this references Bower components jQuery, jQuery.js. So if I also want to make sure underscore gets added, then I just copy and paste these, and they'll end up in my build as well. Let's go underscore. And what is that? Underscore, underscore dot JS. And then backbone is backbone slash backbone dot JS. There you go. So now I've got all three files, and they're all coming into my web page. And if I now run grunt 
build. This is where the true magic takes place. Because if, if this was my web page now, I'm loading one, two, three, four, five JavaScript files. And I have hardly even written a line of code. So you can see as this thing grows and grows and grows, I could be making 15, 20, 30 Git requests. I don't want to have that many script files load up when I open up my page. I want them to, to be much more compressed. So now if I look at my dist folder, I've got scripts, I've got vendor, and the vendor is all the backbone underscore and jQuery files minified, uh, concatenated together. And then I have my main JS, which are my two JavaScript, blog.js and main.js. They've been, they've had all the magic done to them. They're both together. Yippee, it's awesome. So that is pretty much Yeoman, and that's uh, a pretty quick introduction to what it does for you. Uh, there's some other ways that you can, depending on how they built the generator, you might be able to add a view, might be able to generate a page, um, but that's pretty much an intro to Yeoman. Hope it helps, and have an awesome day.